Here's a message of importance to millions of people who are continually pale and washed out, weak and run down. Doctors will tell you that these conditions are often caused by a deficiency of iron. The iron you need to keep you physically fit and mentally alert. Medical studies show that two out of three women and many, many men lack the daily iron your body requires. In a form your body can easily use and put to work. Every dose gives you more than your daily minimum iron requirement. We are the way. We are the way. We are not alone. We are striving for So if you're not getting the iron your body needs, if you feel weak, run down, and are easily upset, start taking today. Friday night's gonna be alright, it's gonna be right, it's gonna be alright now, baby. Friday night's gonna be alright, it's gonna be right, it's gonna be alright now, baby. It's Friday, my dudes. Well, T G I F. Everybody, welcome to Have No Sphere. My name is Josh Corey. Oh, and we have a fantastic New Year's show for everybody tonight. Happy effing New Year. No January fools in this room. Let me just jump right in with my howdy do's. We'll start with the Adam Meekin, since I've not had a chance to really speak to him yet today. Adam, how are you doing? Oh, good, mate. Happy New Year, bro. Happy New Happy Year. New Year. How was your day? How's your week been? It's been busy. I said I've I said to Zai earlier, I'm I'm getting used back to being work like a dog. So it's all been good. And thank you for the request. Good to get a little a, a, a song request in. As I said, I've been humming. Friday <laughs> night's gonna be all right as I've been working today. So uh, yeah, I enjoyed that intro and good evening everyone and uh, looking forward to a good show and happy new year. Happy New Year, everybody. Whew. All right, let me say hello to one Mr. Rob Freddy, because much of tonight's show is in huge part due to Rob. So thank you, Rob, and welcome back. Happy Friday. Happy New Year, sir. Hello, everyone. <clears throat> um, can I just ask to um, New Year, have I, have I gone into another dimension or something? Have I? Because I'm pretty sure it's March. Yeah, March. Yeah. 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 Happy New Year. New Year. <laughs> right. Happy New Year. Uh, uh, when I'm would just... you start the New Year, Rob? Did you? Are you one of those fellas? You're one of those January fools, aren't you? You want to oh, start I, the New uh, Year oh, dead smack in the middle of winter when everything's yeah. dead, and you want to call it new. <laughs> new Year, everything's dead. It's not going to be yeah, new man. for another three months, but Happy New Year. Jeez. Yeah. No. That was a rant. I just see when when um. When the council tells me to go down the uh, beach and watch the fireworks, I just head down there. Bah. <laughs> Perfect. Um, that Friday night song too, was that Zach singing that? Not that one. Nope. I've got okay. a version of Little Boxes floating around here somewhere that Zach okay. covered, but not the Friday songs. No worries. Um, just one thing before we get right into it. I uh, I was listening to the radio yesterday, and um, there's a guy called John Laws down here, very very famous 
uh, radio shock jock, I suppose you would call him. He's been doing it for 50 years. Anyway, a um, chemtrail exponent rang him and he sounded like the biggest nut job you've ever heard in your life. And whether he was planted or not, I don't know. He sounded genuine, but he just sounded like a nut job. And I was just shaking my head, listening. And then, and then John Law was, um, started reading out the emails that he was getting after this guy <laughs> Off the um, off the radio, he didn't read any that were pro chemtrails. He just he just read all the ones. You know, there was just email after email. So whether that was like a little plant or something, I don't I don't know. But it was hmm. he just kept saying, "Please, people, just go outside and look up, look up." He's going, look up. He did, he gave he just he was just rambling. You know what I mean? He just it was really really bad. It would have been good if he actually talked normally and. And uh, and gave some of his um, ideas out there, but he just didn't, and it was it was bad. It was bad, you know. It just makes it, the whole scene look bad. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do. Mm-hmm. And my guess would be it probably was a plant. We've dealt with those ourselves. People claiming to be whistleblowers in the chemtrail community, trying to come out there to get to come on the radio to do the show. I think we had a friend of ours try to connect us with somebody that had told them that they were pilots of chemtrail planes and they were wanting to blow the whistle. And after about three sentences of their interaction, I could tell right away that they were just (laughs) bullshit and looking for a chance to get out there and make the idea look stupid. So that said, I do know how hard it is to to talk about chemtrails to a bunch of people that don't know what you're talking about. And not come off crazy. Mm, I'm sure yeah. I've been labeled crazy by several people over a chemtrail conversation. No, that was all. I just thought I'd mention that. Hmm. Well, happy new year, sir. All right. So John couldn't make it this evening, but I left Zach and Walt because we need to cover a little bit of this morning's show, the Ironworks over on Truth Frequency Radio. And man, <laughs> I thought that was a hell of a show. Walter, let me get you get get your ideas of how the how this morning went. What did you think about it? Well, I'm still uh, not even. I'm still wanting to go back and listen to it all and really get the ramifications of what was said. Because, like you, once we realized who it really was, <laughs> and at first I still was maybe thinking, "Nah, that's not really who that is. It's got to be a joke." The more the conversation continued, I, be- I finally believed that it was who it was. And we said, we're not supposed to, shh, we're not supposed to be talking about this, remember? <laughs> well, ideally, we're not, because we oh. don't want it to get back to sort of the original source. Oh. I don't know how many people watching. I guarantee you it's less than 100. Yeah, so probably. that said, the chances of it getting back are still pretty slim. So why don't you go ahead and give the spoiler and tell everybody exactly how this morning shook out because it was <laughs> it was pretty pretty awesome well with the setup we have there on ironworks i'm usually watching chat we interact a lot with the people there some of them are actually in chat with us right now alan liz shout out to the iron scouts anyway so i missed the calls nine times out of ten thank goodness you were paying attention it wound up being jason I'm sorry. I'm looking at Jason from Densbury that just popped into the chat. My apologies. Hello, Jason. I'm looking at chat again. All right. So Jonathan from Jersey called in. If you don't know who that was, he was like way back 2015. Yeah. You got to go to the reset over there. Uh, kind of his, uh, you know, Robin to, to Mark Sergeant Ben Batman. I don't know. I was trying to make a joke in chat there. I mean, in the description this morning, anyway, He's been out of things and uh, removed himself from things, if you will. I don't know. I don't want to spoil it, though. You really should go listen to the show. It was amazing. And some interesting things came out of that conversation this morning. (laughs) The fact that South contains the word out, little etymology. It also means sun word, sun. Sun uh, side. The sun sun side. side. Yeah. Sun side. I did, I did get a chance to go back and listen to it again while I was at work this morning. I need to. 
I mean, because you, if you you know when he started listening, which was right at the first break, and so he basically caught everything leading up and then called in right at the right before the half halfway mark. So you yeah, can, we were a little bit all over the place this morning as we started. <laughs> we were. And if you go back and listen, <laughs> his whole phone call. All he did was address the stuff that we were talking about before he showed before up. Before he got there. Yep. And it all made sense when once I went back and listened to what we were talking about. Yeah, it was just really, really strange. Uh just because the call board will show his name and then where they're calling from. It's just a caller ID. So it said that his name was John and that he was calling from New Jersey. Right. I and saw I just that. I never put two and two together. I even thought, well, <laughs> what if I just said this is John from New Jersey? I said, well, that just wouldn't sound right. That just, you know, no, nobody says they're John from, John from New Jersey anymore. So I just took the call and he got, I don't know, maybe even a couple minutes in before he told us who he was. I had no idea. I didn't recognize his voice. But then as soon as he told me who it was, it just totally floored me because I was a big fan of his. He's a little off the wall. Um, I agree with maybe 30 or 40 percent of the stuff that he talks about, but he's just operating on a level that I have zero reference. So I still think he's interesting as hell to listen to. So when I heard him, it was just made my day completely. Zachary, too nice for rice, the nomad nomad. Naven Johnson, <laughs> Zabala. <laughs> what did you think of this, this morning's conversation? Yeah, it was very cryptic. Um, he did let a couple slip, you know, by saying who certain characters were and this and that, and put a few pokes in there for a couple people. But yeah, it was, for the most part, I was, I, I definitely need to go back and listen to it. Because it was not, I mean, unless you know what's going on in this guy's head, you had no idea what he was talking about for some of it. <laughs> but yeah, it was, uh, it was cool hearing him, hearing his voice again and just, yeah, it's been so long. And I liked what he brought, the element that he brought to Mark's show. Yeah, me too. They really did play well off of each other. So yeah, I hope he calls back again. <laughs> his brain again. Well, do you believe in God? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have a better chance talking to him. Right. Oh, that was great. Yeah, that, that was pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah, but all in all, yeah, it was it was an awesome show. That was so much fun this morning. And we were ready to go crazy on space lettuce. We had some good space lettuce to cover. Oh, we did. And we'll have to hold on to it for sure. Yep. Oh, yeah. I'm not even yeah, sure. No, I had a blast. It was awesome. Yeah, it was an awesome show. And I want to stay away from stocking up on space lettuce for Tuesday since we have so much. I don't know. Maybe I'll just have to be super selective. But Ooh. there's some really good stories that we have lined up ready to talk about on Tuesday provided i don't know stars or souls doesn't call in <laughs> <laughs> well, we are joined tonight by dd van for their bi-weekly update which has been bi-weekly thus far though i think they're gonna s skip an appearance take a little break take a little time off and get things resituated dd welcome back to have no sphere Hey guys, thanks for having me and happy spring new year. Happy new year. <laughs> happy new year, Didi. You making any resolutions this, this new year, Didi? <laughs> uh, not really, actually. Try, I'm trying to get another job, so maybe that's uh, something that counts. I'm, I'm having this feeling a lot of people are changing jobs at this point, so it's, it looks like a thing. Yeah, I, it seems like it's happening here in the States. But, you know, that's our Cheeto-in-Chief making all these new jobs. So, you know, unemployment's down and everybody's rushing out to go earn their, earn their life credits. That's the American dream. 
got to work for 60 years, and then die. Yay. Anyway, Happy New Year. We're not going to start off on that note. <laughs> uh. So you had some announcements for us, Didi, no? Yeah, so it's uh, another Friday, so that means another name, of course. And I'm very excited about this one because uh, we started in January with uh, our first speaker, <coughs> our first lady, which was Roxanne. And I'm, I'm very excited to say that we have another female joining the team. So for the, the next speaker for, for this Friday is, is uh, Karen B. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> that was oh, the best you. timing ever, though, by Karen. <laughs> Did you time that on purpose, Karen? Or um, no. <laughs> <laughs> Still well done. <laughs> the stars alive. Okay. Hi. Hi, Karen. How are you doing? Good. How are you guys? I'm well. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> are you making any resolutions this year? Oh. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, kids. Be more resolute. Sounds good. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's um, right. no, I don't do resolutions. That sounds like you've made a resolution to meet a load right. of European flat earthers. <laughs> okay, well then, yeah, if you want to <laughs> um, put it that way, sure. <laughs> and this year, you've decided for this year, you're not going to do any resolutions at all this year, huh? No, I don't really ever do resolutions because... So you're going to continue for this year. You're going to make sure you continue your streak of no resolutions. That's what you've decided to do this year. That's right. My resolution is to continue not doing resolutions. Perfect. <laughs> What's yours then, Josh? If you... I, mine was to be more resolute. <laughs> if I'm going to, if I'm going to make a resolution, by God, I'm determined to stick to it. If it happens, I will be more resolute. You know, I think this is my year. I'm going 4K. I'm done with the 1080. That was 2018. 4K all the way this year. <laughs> I'm still watching TV in 720 like the cavemen. That's a joke. Mostly. <laughs> uh, only on one right, so screen. <laughs> my resolution is to not own a computer again next year. So I shouldn't send one of these home with you to take to your mom's? No. That's very right. nice. It'd be a paperweight. <laughs> Is it fondle slab only, Zach, or nothing? <laughs> yeah, I just do the phone. What if I that's get you awesome. a headset, like a gaming headset, so you have a little boom mic and some good headphones? That way, when you came on, you might improve your audio just a touch. Yeah, I mean, whatever you want. I mean, I'm not... I've seen some nifty little adapters. You just pop into your phone and you can plug your headset into that. And I'm pretty sure that that would really, I mean, look at Didi right there. Didi sounds so good. She's got a nice headset on with the little boom mic right there by her mouth. You could do that, Zach. We have the technology. <laughs> All right. Why don't I shut the F up? Why you, don't let me ramble like this. Um, Didi, you tell me to shut up and you start talking. Tell us about how does you got Karen involved and what she's got planned and all that good stuff. Well, I met Karen, I think, three times now, maybe. Yeah, so the two conventions in the U.S. and then we went to Balaton together with, uh, with PCOR. That's right. So uh, I, just, I just love being around her. She's a great woman. And, and you know that for the, the convention, I, I really like to have more females in the flattered community to step up and, and get on stage and you know so i just asked her and she said yes so simple as that <laughs> well that's a great way to do it <laughs> so Karen, what do you got planned uh, what are you looking forward to um i'm looking forward to meeting more flat earthers <laughs> that's probably <laughs> the best part about any of this is meeting all the great people that we get to talk to every day online Face to face, nothing beats it. Yeah, it really is a magical event. Here, that was my favorite part. I didn't really get to see the speakers too much, but I just had an amazing time. It was so much energy. 
Did you ever went to Amsterdam, Karen? Is it your first time out of the U.S.? Um, well, no. I mean, I've been to Europe a, a couple times now, but I've never been to Amsterdam. So that'll be my first time there, and I'm really looking forward to it because I've actually wanted to go there for quite some time. So it uh, it couldn't be going there under any better circumstances. <laughs> no, I'm super jealous. I think it's going to be an awesome, awesome time. I can't wait, Josh. I, I was wait. just getting ready to drag you into this conversation. I was, I was, I was, I was, I was a kid because, as, as Karen said there, mate, it, I know the the lectures and there's a lot of work going into that, but having been to one, the thing I'm most looking forward to again is this kind of thing, is meeting the people that you engage with online and Meeting him again is going to be brilliant. Meeting other people again for the first time, I'm really looking forward to it again as well. And can't wait to meet you, Karen. It's going to be fun. Um, I love Amsterdam. I, I can't remember most of it. But it is a good city, as far as I do recollect. But you don't recollect that much? Is that what you're trying to say? These bits, right? There was bits like crawling up the steps of the grasshopper, is is in like photographs, mate. It's like it was like even at the time, like time was standing still as I was crawling up them steps. It'd been in the basement. It's really steep. It's like on a ship. But uh, I'll stop rambling. But no, yeah, I don't remember it very well. <laughs> if I'm being honest, but it was good fun. I know that. Sounds like my twenties. <laughs> it was my. <laughs> oh, well, actually, we're we're going. Uh, me and Gary are going to uh, Amsterdam in two weeks now to visit uh, the venue and make sure that everything is a hundred percent set. Check out the campsite again, and we're planning on on shooting some footage. So hopefully, uh, when we come back here next month, we can show you a little bit more about uh, the venue and the accommodation and have some more footage about it. So. We're visiting early. The sacrifices we make, right? Oh, that's, that's tough. Are you getting Gary on edibles? Some gummy bears here again. Or... I've been trying. I think this is the year, so you never know. <laughs> well, the sacrifices you have to make, mate, I think fair play to you if you're going there on a research trip. Well, we have to, you know. If, if you have to get this big convention in order, you just have to visit the venue two or three times to make sure because... Just doing it by email or phone, is, it's not going to cut it. You're a martyr. You're a legend. I thank you for your efforts. And if anybody out there saying people are, you know, they're not, you know, mate, I think respect. That's a lot of effort, a lot of traveling. Forget where you're going to. I'm, I'm being serious now. To go out and have to travel to another European city and do it, wherever you're going to, fun place. Yeah, wicked, wicked. Um, but... Hey, playmate, that's a shed load of effort, and, and thank you for all you're doing, because I can't wait, and tonight I'm going to meet another person that I've met to on I've met online, and, and that, and I'm going to get to meet him in face-to-face -face because of you, and thank you to you and Gary for your efforts. I know I say it most weeks, but I get excited by this point all the time, you see, so I'll stop it now, but cheers, mate. I'm not doing, I'm doing this for myself, of course, a little, because just spending time with so many flat earthers is, is what I love to do. So it's just, uh, it's just because there are no big conventions in Europe, this is, a, this is the way to get it done. So we're going to do it ourselves and hopefully it's going to be a big success like Birmingham last year. We learned, we learned a lot. So we're trying to improve with, uh, with this convention and so far people are excited. We have a great speakers list. Uh, we have a lot of people already coming. The tickets uh, are going, so I can't ask for more at this point. Karen, are you doing the um, log cabin experience or city centre? What's your plans? Are you? I'm not 100% sure yet, um, to be honest. Um, I'm a little worried about the camping thing and having to bring a sleeping bag across the ocean and all that stuff. <laughs> so I don't know. 
I will take sure. care of that, Karen. You don't need to bring anything. Oh. Gary should have told me. <laughs> oh, thank him. I think DD gets you a duvet, don't you? If you're coming across the Atlantic, you get a free duvet. I heard. Right, I'm not expecting people who take a flight to to bring all the sleeping gear. That's that's not that's not realistic. So, for me, it's like a two-hour drive. I have plenty of uh, sleeping bags and extra pillows, and I will just fill up the car. With it. Everybody just grab what they need. But there's a lot of people a bit hesitant about the campsite. I, I thought uh, it was it was a a different thing than a hotel, but so far people are a little bit hesitant. So that's why we're going to visit the campsite again. I'm, I'm hoping when I get some footage and, and show everybody how the cabins look like that they will get a better understanding about what it is that we're trying to do. But it's a, uh, it's not just sleeping in a tent. It is a little, a little bit more luxurious than, uh, than that. So, but people have a choice if, if they don't want to stay on the campsite, I will, I will not stop them to, to go somewhere else. I'm, I, mate, I've only seen the pictures you've released and had a little scroll on, on Google and that, but I think it looks wicked. I've been, that looks like, it's not quite glamping, but it's not like, see, when we had the kids, early, when the kids were early on, I thought I, I, I wanted to just go away weekend. So we, we looked at camping and I was, I was never quite into a tent, if I'm being honest, quite me. So we got a caravan for it, which, because I love being, and that kind of seems at, at caravan level, the accommodation. It's not, I say, it's not glamping, but I say, I'm I'm a bit fruity like that. And it doesn't put me off. I've, I'm well excited. I think that's going to be wicked. It's not just so much the accommodation, but that environment and the way it'll allow us to interact, I think will be brilliant. And uh, I'd encourage anyone who's making that journey that it's going to be the place to be i would suggest in terms of interaction outside of the event other than a couple of the venues but you know after after hours that's where it's going to continue so better having your bed around the corner than over the river the the thing we wanted to think about is is uh, hotels are just very expensive you know and a lot of people complain that conventions cost so much money and you know all that stuff so this little campsite it, it's not only a, a cozy little place it's just outside the city center it's just very affordable as well if you want to take a tent and go really cheap it, it just costs you about 10 euros per person a night if you want to get a bit more luxurious then then the cabins are about 60 70 euros for three nights so it's just so affordable for everybody, especially because we're staying there for two, three days. If you're going to a hotel, it will it will cost you uh, 50 to 100 euros a night easily. So that's why I thought this was a good option because so many people just keep complaining about prices and, and money. So if everybody's free to do what they want. I just think it's, it's a great concept. There's a, a place there for a campfire. We can hang out with everybody who's been to a convention, you know, that the fun happens late in the evening when we all gather around and we play some music and we just chat, uh, chat a bit and if we do it on, on a little campsite outside with a campfire it just adds so much more value in my mind but that's that's of course just my opinion though we'll, we'll see what happens but I do encourage everybody to if you if you like camping even even glamping is a bit possible there then just join us on the campsite if you want to go to a hotel you're free to do so but you will miss out some fun at the campfire i'm sure of that and even a little barbecue if, if possible unless it's a lifestyle i am philosophically opposed to glamping like zach i can appreciate if you like are in a situation where that's how you live i can get it but other than that that's not how you camp if you're going camping you don't camp with electricity and beds and televisions and not even fondle slabs that's not camping see bed was the issue for me <laughs> it was the bed like I don't want to blow up, lay on something I've just blown up. I know it's not going to work. I know it'll be flat by four in the morning. Yeah, there will be no sleep anyway, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Nobody will be sleeping. <laughs> yeah, four in the morning at the conference is kind of irrelevant, but 
you know. And, and that's the thing, mate. That it does carry on, and it won't be carrying on in the bars. And I think that's that's the, the point I'd make is we were lucky in the hotel because we were all there and we could stay there as long as we were on and you know annoy the staff, keep them up as late as possible. But I think with the with it in Amsterdam, it's going to be interesting where the event carries on. And for me, that that was the. Even risking it, Josh, for having to go near a tent, but there is, I'm pretty sure I'm assured I, I've got a cabin with a bed in it. So for me, that was also, mate, it's going to be the best thing, as we said, you know, it's, it's about the people and meeting them and interacting. And that's the time you're going to be talking about what's gone off at the convention as well. So, yeah, I'm sure after the, the convention itself, we will go into the city and have some fun there. And people who want some peace and quiet, they go to the campsite. We all meet up there in, in the morning. And so there's just so much choice, you know. That's that's the main idea we're, we're having here. We just want to give people the option to, to do what they feel comfortable with. If you don't want to stick around at the venue at the bar, then you can do whatever you like. But we learned from the Birmingham convention last year that... The, First of all, the, the price is at the bar from the venue itself. It's crazy. You pay like four or five euros for a little drink. So it's it's not very affordable. If you go to a campsite, you just bring whatever you You go to the supermarket, you buy what you want, you bring what you need. So it's it's everybody has a lot more choice in, in this regard. That's, that's another thing I, I like about this campsite. But if you want to visit some coffee shops or go to the bar, then there will be uh, more flatter to join in you. I'm, I'm sure about that one. got a feeling that i'll head off to the uh, supermarket decide to stop at a coffee shop and it could be four hours before i remember i was going to the supermarket but i look forward to that memory loss i just want to give a big shout out to jonathan from jersey who i happen to see pop into chat their perceptions talk radio thanks again for this morning jonathan still riding high still grinning ear to ear Still appreciate you coming in. That was awesome. That's all I had. I'm trying to make sure we can get Miss Patricia Steer either in here or connected somehow. Um, hey Dee Dee, at this campsite, can we have campfires? Yes, there is a there is two spots to make a campfire. And there's also a little spot for a, a, a barbecue. So they allow everything. There's there's places for everything. If you don't want to be around the campfire, you can choose a cabin or a, or a teepee or whatever you want on the other side of the camp campsite. So it's a bit more quiet, but there's so much choice. And I love campfires, so there need to be one. And I'm hoping Iru will play his guitar as well. So looking forward to that one. Oh, I know. Yeah, that would be awesome. I think it'll be fun no matter what. I yeah. bet it will be. I love camping. I actually love camping. I haven't been camping in over a decade, though. But I, I used to love it. I used to go camping quite a bit. And I live in the woods. Yeah, it's still the same. <laughs> it's still the same. The ground's still hard. Yeah. yeah. It's fun. Yeah, I think the only thing that, that's important for me on a campsite is that people have the option to have a little bed. So if you don't want to stay in a tent or a camper van, the teepees and the cabins, they have like mattresses, so they're a decent little bed because the little hours you do sleep, you want to keep well. So I thought it was important to, to have mattresses there. But there's also a, a little store and a restaurant at the campsite, showers, Wi-Fi. It, it has everything you need just to, and about, I don't know, 15 to 20 minutes from the city center. So Amsterdam, is it's very uh, easy to get some transport and get everywhere. Sorry, I'm here. I'm still just trying to get uh, Patricia situated and make sure she's uh, able to get in. Well, before before Patricia comes in, Karen, are we? Are you able to elaborate a little bit on what you're planning to do when you get over there? Or Paul Paul said last week he was going to set the stage, and that that's what we got. <laughs> I wonder. 
Have you got anything planned or? Paul said he was going to set the stage. Setting the stage, whole thing. Well, Paul is Obviously the first speaker on the Saturday morning. That's why. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> what does that mean? Um, actually, I'm not a hundred percent sure yet. I'm, you know, I, there's still a while before it comes before I have to figure out what I'm going to do. But I still um, like the idea of talking about the same sort of subject matter that I talked about in Denver because I think it's really important. So I'd like to kind of refine that talk. And I might incorporate a couple of other things into it, like um, being a mom and, you know, dealing with raising children in um, this sort of weird times that we're growing up in, you know, um, where they sort of have to be aware of this, of these two uh, paradigms that are kind of existing side by side right now. You know, it's like... Um, you know, the mainstream where they're telling you all this stuff that we know is not true. And then the stuff that we have since found out is true or, or we're still learning the truth about things and they sort of still have to exist in society within that. And so I think it's probably a good idea to address that a little bit because um, it can be difficult to a lot. Of, I hear a lot of people talking about what do you tell your children? What do you tell your children? <laughs> you know? And that's that's a big deal because the children, um, not to sound cheesy, are the future. Like when when you're talking about um, how are you going to change the world? I mean, if you think about how we got here, that's what they did. They targeted the children. They taught them things. And then those children grew up and taught their children and so on and so forth. And that's kind of how we got here. So how are we going to combat that? Well, we're going to have to do the same thing. We have to teach our children so that they know the truth and then they can grow up and or they can teach others or teach their friends or whatever. I think that's uh, the stuff that we, we as old men have chatted out for a bit and it's, it's great to see it coming out in Fly Earth now and that's the importance of the female voice uh, within Flat Earth and why it's important and I think what you hit on there is is the real importance men can ramble all day long but it, it's actually women that teach this and I hope if you are there that maybe some of that as is addressed and recognition and the importance of more women coming forward because this has been a very male dominated environment and the clarity <laughs> women women bring their own uh, problems to any dynamic but actually within this what you're seeing is women bring in taking away a hell of a lot of the bullshit uh, and often a woman's voice is certainly in this environment is listened to a lot and I look forward to whatever you're going to do there mate because I think it's really important that all of us men and women push the importance of women in this movement uh, because it is women that's going to actually pass it on realistically to the children. Because as, as much as I'd like to be a good dad, I know that most of my child's education and the important stuff is, is done by my wife. Um, yeah, I, I just my, want to add to my that. Opinion, because... My opinion on that, um, Adam, is we, we don't want to shove it down the kids' throats either. Like I've got three mm -hmm. kids and I, I don't want to shove it down their throats and and i want to let them you know i've i've put it into their mind so when do they go to school now and they they're learning about the universe they're also thinking about my side of you because if if we sit there and shove it down their throats we could look like we could look like crazy people to our own kids if we if we harp on it and harp on it and harp on it if you know if you know what i mean we've just got to let them let them uh do it in their own time you know we can my I'm, kids not, I'm, not, all, I'm not so uh, much on they, about they that, mate. I'm on about the, the yeah. subtlety in which women teach children uh, and the differences of that. Are. For example, I had nothing to do with the education of my children with regards to sexuality, yet they have grown up well-rounded individuals understanding and respecting other people's choices. And I had nothing to do with it. And God knows what I would have done 
and how I would have educated my children to do that. I'm blessed with a wonderful partner who's infinitely better than me, um, who was able to do that. And, and what that, that's what I'm talking about is how whatever viewpoint, the mother is the one that educates that in children and balance, not necessarily it's flat or round, but a comprehension that there's a choice to be made. And that's what's important to me when I see, when I talk about women in flat earth, I think, and the future of flat earth, it's, it has to be part of family. Um, I'll stop rambling, but. Well, I, I think the fact that point. Karen had to be a bit late, well, actually she was perfectly timed, <laughs> but she thought she was going to be late because the kids came first speaks volumes in this whole exactly what you're saying <laughs> sir well this this flat earth thing is um another reason why my wife left six months ago and she's she said that to me so it's it's very very difficult to uh <sighs> it's very difficult in life you know to it's a balance isn't it you don't want to i don't know ter terrible terrible yeah, to think that you can, you can change your you can change your family life because of something that you believe, you know, and you you lose a lot of what you think, but you, it's something that you believe in, you strongly believe in, and um, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry I, to hear I know that. A few people who have, you know, split up the family because of this. It wasn't the only reason, but yeah, it was it was a main it was a it was a big reason. When, when yeah, she left, catapult. yeah, it was when the, she uh, said, yeah, you, you, you're a crazy person, she said, and I'm, I'm pretty level headed actually with all this. I don't, I don't do too much out there, you know, but, um, but, but that's why that's the way she grew to sort, see me in the last three or four years. And I was just trying to have a look, and um, I was, I was mentioning it to her, but she did, she wasn't interested, but, but you know, it's, uh, it's hard. Talking about children, I know both Karen and Roxanne are, are moms in the, the first place, but we know that Roxanne, there's a chance uh, she will bring her, her daughter. She's 16 years old and she might be able to, to speak a little bit if she wants. So it's something I think it hasn't been done a lot in the in this community is, is having the view of a mom and how you handle your family and your children. So I think it, it adds a lot of value to have some strong females in this in this convention, in this community, you know, everywhere, because it's it's something we need to talk about, and it hasn't been done enough. Karen, yeah, how old how old are your kids? Are they? Mine are they're still quite young. My daughter is um, about to turn seven, and my son is nine, and then I have a an older son that's fifteen. I've got one just about to go fourteen. That's finding his voice. I was just saying that, you see, that, that's the next stage as well as what's going to come in is the youth, the, the proper youngsters, 14, 15, 16 year olds that are coming into Flat Earth. And that's the, for me, the really important thing that we all have to consider as we move forward with our language and our behavior as they start to engage with this as well. Because um, I want my son. To listen to this because there's so much truth in there and there's so much nonsense i won't necessarily expose him to everything but i think there's a lot of fantastic stuff and i think engagement with with the youngsters is the next stage we need to seriously think what's going to happen i think the biggest difference with with the amsterdam convention and, and conferences in the us is that the European crowd is, is a very different crowd than, than the US. There will be no focus on, on religion in Amsterdam. We're going to talk about the different aspects of letter, to talking about families, about how we can help and support each other. It's a it's a very different vibe here. I I, I think it's a it's necessary well, to adapt to the location you're in. So that's the only thing I ask my speakers is is to keep in mind that European crowd is not the same as, as how it is in the US. But other than that, everybody's free to talk about what they want, of course. I'd like to see a couple of people speak on being self-sufficient. 
gardening, collecting and cleaning your own water. I think stuff like that is invaluable. Aren't you finding that? <laughs> well, I was supposed to be moving to Croatia, but I decided not to. If there's any way possible I can get over there, I will. But yeah, I had a... Oh, we'll talk about it later. But yeah, I'm not moving to Croatia. No, I don't think I could. I can do it. Yeah, it's just kind of a third world country, dead dogs laying in the road and stuff. And So I don't, tell all the ladies where you decided to go instead. One of the big reasons why you're not going to Croatia. Oh, because of my mom? <laughs> How sweet yeah. is that? My mom's <laughs> Christmas tree is still up, even though it probably still would be up. <laughs> you know, my mom loves her. She takes all the ornaments and all the stuff off, but she likes the lights in the tree. Like, I'm not going to leave it up for just a few weeks. I'll leave it up as long as I want. So, yeah, usually before Easter, it comes down. But, yeah, I got some stuff I need to go do to take care of mom. Croatia can go on the back burner or off the stove completely. It's fine. Mom's got to take priority. Yeah, for now, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. We've not given up on Zabala in the dam. That's not finished. That's not the end of it. No, there's still a possibility. And we're still getting how we Italian. Mrs. Well, speaking yeah, of strong <laughs> female voices in yeah. the flat Earth community, who will be at the convention? I, I believe that we have been joined by one of the strongest, perhaps. Am I correct? Did we finally get this thing worked out or not, everybody? <laughs> I'm actually on with you guys on Iron Realm Media Look at using this. Zoom. Amazingly enough, it took a while. Um, technical welcome, Miss Patricia Steer. <laughs> so much, so much welcome this year. We're so glad to have you. I'm so glad to be asked to be on with everyone. And so, hi to everyone, and hi to everyone in the live chat. I was just in there saying hi. So, yeah, um, happy new year to everyone. And uh, I hear Dee Dee was asked and Karen was asked if they have any new year's resolutions, they and were. And it's a funny thing, New Year's resolutions. I I think they're stupid because you should always resolve to be your best every single day. But then I do fall into that trap as, you know, the 1st of January comes around, the, the traditional way people look at New Year's Eve, New Year's and New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. And I always make some kind of resolution which lasts a week or two. So um, if, I were, if I were a stronger person and all of us were, we would be able to actually have resolutions that meant something. But uh, I, I have made a resolution, and it is to fall in love in 2019. I dig it. That's real, real love, not some like weird thing that turns out to be a giant nightmare from hell. Me too. <laughs> it's me too. Really, Rob? Real love, yeah. Shit, yeah. We know a guy down in Australia. Uh, <laughs> Wait, if, only if he's upside down. Only. He's oh, upside. he's all sorts of upside down. <laughs> yeah, that's why the wife left. <laughs> so, yeah, that's my, my resolution. I mean, you can't make it happen, but I'm trying to bring it into existence through just putting out that energy. So. Well, I will help you put out that energy because I want nothing but love for you and for everyone listening and everyone watching and everyone who's not. I think that's an awesome New Year's resolution. Yes, exactly. The one po most people make is like to lose weight or, <laughs> you know, no <laughs> whatever. I did to gain weight. I, um, my resolution was to gain weight. Very rare. I'm very doing rare. very, I'm doing very, very well. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Well, I see uh, Jonathan from Jersey is in the chat and I went and said hello to him. I remember on one of the Flat Earth and Other Hot Potato Secret shows, Somebody in the chat said Jonathan was dead out of the blue. And I'm like, what? <laughs> like, what? And I went and checked his channel. Nothing new was on the channel. But I mean, not that a channel's going to tell you whether or not there's a pulse involved with a human being. Because look at Tiger Dan's <laughs> channel. I think that thing never goes anywhere. But he keeps getting subscribers. But who knows where he is? <laughs> but <laughs> but with, with Jonathan, I just, I'm not, I'm not one of those kind of people who can feel like I can feel if someone's alive. But I just thought that was just dumb, stupid gossip because there's so much of that within the flat earth community as we all know uh, well, i ignored it and then you know all of a sudden somebody 
messaged in another chat on The Secret Show with Mark Sargent and myself, Jonathan's channel, he, he put something up. He's still alive. <laughs> so anyway, glad he's still alive. Hope he starts making videos again. Yeah, I was super glad to see he was still alive too. We were quite shocked, not only to get a caller at 4 a.m. or 4.30 <laughs> a.m. in the morning on TFR, but for that caller to then be Jonathan from Jersey just completely threw me off the whole rest of the show. There's I was, no other Jonathan from Jersey, although there's tons of people named Jonathan who live in Jersey, but within the flat earth realm, if you say Jonathan from Jersey, if you've been around long enough, you'll say, oh yeah, that's right. Strange World with Mark Sargent, the early days. Yeah, I'm not that smart. I really, I'm not that smart because it's got caller ID on the TFR call board. So when somebody calls in, we can see who and from where they call. And I never put that together. I could see it was John and I could see they were calling from New Jersey. And nope, right over my head. Missed it completely. Hmm. Well, Welcome back to the fold. I wonder, um, you know, I didn't listen to the show late last night and I heard at the opening of this show how you said he said a lot of interesting things and outed some people or something. You were vague in what you said, so I'm going to have to go back and listen to it. Unfortunately, but, he was vague in what he was saying. That was part of it. So, Well, uh, Perceptions, that's the name of his show. So you have to use your yes. own perception to figure out what he's talking about, I guess. You really do. That's why I've always liked listening to him because... I may not get most of what he says when he says it, but when he says it, it makes me think. And whether I finally get it or not, I have some really good one-on-one -on -one conversations with myself about the things that he says. And that's what I really enjoy. So I, <laughs> I was absolutely chuffed to, to have him call us of all, <laughs> all shows. Well, up late at night, um, I often am doing probably what he was doing, scanning the radio dial or... In our words, that's YouTube and you know TFR and all these other places that we get information from. Because I've I haven't listened to radio in years. I used to be in radio. Now, if I'm in someone's car and radio is on, it's like uh, make it stop because it's just tons of commercials for products I have no interest in and music that makes me want to slit wrists. Not just my own, but everyone else's around me. And I, of course, I'm exaggerating. There's still good music being made. And sometimes mainstream might have a commercial for a product you might want. But still, yeah, it's much better to, you know, look around at, at the different sources we've got. And that's probably what Jonathan was doing late night, you know, and just seeing who's on, what's happening and found you guys. Maybe he listens to you a lot. You know, we're talking about Jonathan as if he's a big celebrity, but that's how I feel about everybody within this awakening <laughs> And it's like, it's almost like finding out, and I don't mean Jonathan, but when you find out somebody listens to what you do, that's a, a name, a made man, <laughs> you say, it's almost like Al Pacino was listening or something. Right. <laughs> like, well, hey, he seemed right. to imply he's heard a show or two. He may have just been blowing smoke, but it definitely felt nice to know someone might actually be out there paying attention. Yeah. Lots of amazing listeners. And we definitely have a lot of people paying attention, but definitely it was a, we don't know way. who oh, listens. Say that. There's people who, um, on my YouTube uh, Creator Studio, I think it's called, or those of us who use you know what I'm talking about, you can look and see uh, where your listeners come from, what, what part of the world, the known world anyway. And um, you can also look and see if they're coming from people who've subscribed to you or from outside of that. And I have more listeners that aren't subscribed that are listening according to the to the stats and um and then when you look at who's subscribed to your channel some people choose to hide who they subscribe to um and and so um and who yeah who they subscribe to so if they subscribe to unreal media they might not show up so anyway it is it is nice to um know that there's people out there listening that may not be the, the general people that you know and love that are in your chats it's cool it really is yeah i've been shocked we had a a Facebook friend of mine on the Ironworks show, Guy Williams, who does like spoken word poetry over a beat. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, it's really cool. But uh, <laughs> apparently, because he's in Detroit, and there's like a really successful local band who's starting to kind of branch out nationally, and the name eludes me at the moment. Um, <laughs> Walter, what? what <laughs> Wilderberger. Wilderberger. That, that, that's who Guy 
that's the name of the group that guy has. You remember the guy, because guy oh, yeah. was walking um, down the street that he ran into that knew about us. Yeah. 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 Oh, he was man, the lead was singer it. from this band. I'll be damned if I can remember who it is, but the, recognized guy. The Bilderberg Mark. group. The Bilderberg group. That's the Bilderberg the group. Yeah. yeah. Yep. That's, that's a, a good name. I mean, you know, when you read that, you know what exactly, exactly. what he's into. <laughs> yeah. Or and if you did that so it. that when you search for it, the first thing you actually find is some, you know, hidden research maybe so, alex jones with a megaphone that could be probably <laughs> unfortunately right. might be what you might Same find name. <laughs> name. so yeah it was it's shocking that someone this lead singer of this relatively successful band in detroit happened to recognize guy from our show just a little old ironworks show on tfr but yeah it was really exciting you just never know who's listening so <laughs> being a fan and a listener myself, when I got Jonathan on the call this morning, I was just absolutely thrilled. Hmm. And to have you on, Patricia, is one of those things that we've been trying here in the Iron Realm to make happen for the I better know part. about a year or maybe it was two years ago. Hmm. I was in some chat, something with you guys. I don't know how it worked out. And I said, I want to get you guys on my show. And then you said, yeah, we want you on. And it just sort of never happened. We've done that a few times and a few chats. I was saying that earlier today. It that wasn't we, that we were ignoring each other. Mm -hmm. It's just that, you know, whatever things happen. And then when they, when stars align, I don't think <laughs> we can say that anymore. Maybe we can. When stars align, things happen. So well, that, that's the exact way. Yeah, they still align. We've, I, I, I think we've interacted, Patricia, and, and a number of different ways in, in in terms of fly off but yeah good evening happy new year it's mm. <laughs> happy new year i hope um i hope that you know it, i can make i would like to make a new year's resolution which i wish i could enforce across the plane but of course i can't which is everybody just chill the heck out and mm. stop pointing fingers at each Thank other you. and making these accusations they're they're so out of control now well you know in a way it's kind of good because they're so crazy that they are, they're almost impossible for one person to be all of these things they're being accused of. <laughs> so it's just, we're eating ourselves alive. And people always say, well, what, you don't believe there's agents in flat earth? Of course, it's the biggest secret. They don't need to have agents in flat earth. We do the job for them. We destroy ourselves. And if there are powers that should not be who are watching flat earth and trying to keep it small and, you know, thwart our freedoms and disrupt our communications, they're just laughing at all the stuff we do to each other and just sitting back, like probably smoking a cigar. <laughs> so you see that hit piece that person did on that person? Yeah, well, that'll keep them quiet for a while. They won't get any work done. <laughs> I agree, Patricia. I agree. Yeah, you know, most definitely. I I hate to pull the woman card, and I'm not, but women get hit hard with the weirdest stuff. Men get hit with the normal stuff. Women get hit with the weird, crazy accusations. So there's always that strange underlying sexual desire for most <laughs> guys that they either. Yes acknowledge and don't want to admit or is just repressed somewhere and they're subtly acting out some misogynistic fantasy i don't I mean, know you wonder if like sometimes i'm sure karen you feel the same you want to say to these people do i look like a woman who dumped you in high school is that what this is all about <laughs> or or what or you know some crazy stuff but eh, whatever there's a there's so many good people sometimes the bad people are the noisiest but if you if we had all the people together in one giant stadium the amount of people who were being kind to each other even if we have different beliefs would definitely outnumber the bad the bad would just be a lot noisier and they'd end up fighting among themselves so um what's that expression a trash takes itself out I don't know. <laughs> and i'm not saying people are trash i think there's a lot of very confused people who come into any world people who like pro football people who like collecting little gold coins and people who are interested in flat earth whatever the thing is there's crazy people in those groups of people and when it comes to the internet and people who have maybe bad home lives personality disorders broken heart um, mental disorders they now are in a group of people trying to achieve something and they have a voice within that group 
And what they're going to use that voice for is going to be to try to destroy because they're broken inside. And the old hurt people, hurt people thing comes to mind. So you just have to just forgive. But I know Karen and any other woman or man who's had these attacks come toward them, and everyone has, sometimes you do end up saying, oh, when will it stop? But it's never going to stop. And as this continues to grow, more and more people will get affected by the negative, the naysayers, the finger pointing. It's just part of part of the thing. It's part of it. It's going to get worse. Someday, it hopefully, it'll get to, better. I think it speaks to how big this is actually getting, that those, like you say, the variety of people in this, I don't want to say movement anymore. We, yeah, we, I say awakening. Crusades this morning. So it's the Flat Earth Crusades now. Oh, yeah. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Yeah, there's, I mean, with that idea that there's a lot of new people with a lot of different issues and bringing their baggage to all this, I mean, the size of this really must be getting out of hand. There's quite a few hit pieces going on in the big media, as you should know yourself. I'm, I'm sure you're aware. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm not involved in the big media, but I do see, and we all do, we do look and see, you know, politicians attacking each other. It's, it's almost like that. It's like that mud slinging that is below all of us who are exploring these brand new to us anyway ideas, things that should make us better people. But we're doing that politician mud slinging. And I'm like, come on, let's be better. So if I could enforce a resolution across the plane, and I can't, for New Year's, it would be just be better. Try to be better. I'm going to try to be better. I'm not saying I'm, you know, above any of this. I'm going to try to be better too. Well, I sure appreciate you, Patricia. Good. Regardless of what anybody else wants to say about you, you have been a huge influence on me as well. Uh, I mean, I don't care <laughs> pretty much what anybody has to say. I can take information and uh, separate out the stuff that I need and leave the stuff that I don't and come back to it at a later time. Well, uh, what? So what is that? Are you, are you saying you're exercising discernment or are you saying you're just going to take what I might say and some of it could be bad and you'll leave it to the side and some of it could be good because discernment to me is like when you hear a hit piece on somebody, let's say the person's name is John. You see a hit piece on John and you know all that's just a bunch of lies. So you'd be using your own discernment and you'd still associate with John and realize the John's getting hammered pretty hard, but none of it's true. So that's discernment. And the other one is you listen to John and John says some stuff that's pretty stupid sometimes, kind of foolish and eh, don't like it, but you're going to still listen to him and eat the meat and spit out the bones. So I'm not sure which one you're speaking of. I guess it just she's, depends. She's ripped into you there, right? Okay. <laughs> no, that's really good. It, it depends, I suppose, on, on the mood. Or on the person, <laughs> I, I can really go yeah. either way. I know uh, what you're saying. I know what you're saying. Um, it's hard sometimes. I assume anybody being attacked for anything on YouTube, especially in our little realm, is innocent of the all charges. <laughs> because I myself am accused of lots of stuff. So if somebody else is being accused of something that sounds kind of nuts, I always think, you know what? They're probably, it's probably just the same thing that's happening to me. And until they openly are doing whatever that is, where I have proof, not just a video about somebody, but literal proof, I'm just going to continue to treat them with respect. And if somebody is just a, just all they do is make a channel about attacking people, I just, I just don't ever watch that channel anymore. I kind of mentally erase them. Mm -hmm. So I don't yeah. know. No, nope, there is zero need for a constant attack. I wonder uh, well, why I decided at one point to never attack. I never really consciously made that decision or never respond. I never said to myself, that's how you're going to deal with this. It was just as flat earth unfolded for me from 2015 forward. I just, well, I guess what we all do is just be ourselves and whatever that personality you've got is, that's what you're going to put out. I've been tempted, especially early on, I would think like probably when I was taking a shower, very alone in your own head. And I think about like, well, I could just make a video and say this and this and this and this and that and really show everybody the truth. And then I realize you can't because no matter what you say, they'll just say, oh, damage control or oh, look at the lies. <laughs> so, and they'll, they'll respond back 
and it will become a tit for tat war. And they're also wanting you. They're trying to bait you to respond. So the best thing to do is just zip it yep. and move on and do things of value. I completely agree. That is exactly what I do. Like if every time I hear, you know, somebody's made a video about me or somebody's saying something about me, I just, I'm like, I don't, I don't care. I'm not even, I don't give it any of my attention because once you start giving stuff like that, your energy, they start feeding off that energy. And then they, it's just like you said, they're baiting you. They're trying to suck you into this back and forth that might not ever end. And all it's doing is wasting your valuable time that you could be spending doing something else that is actually productive, mm -hmm. like talking to someone or learning something or sharing truth with somebody. It's like you, there's no reason to engage these people. If they want to, you know, sit in their little dark corner of the internet and make horrible videos or talk crap about you or make fun of you, let them do it. Because that's, that's, it's, because I'm a big believer in the law of attraction. So if they want to sit there and they want to put out all this negativity, that's all they're going to do is bring negativity back to them and they'll get the, they'll, they'll, it'll, it'll come back to them. You don't even have to do anything. I, and I didn't ever think it would in some cases, but then all of a sudden certain people's channels just disappear and you're like, whoa, is that karma happening? I mean, probably they caused it, but is that karma? Pretty cool pretty cool. And, but I don't want anybody's channel to disappear. I'm not saying that, of course, but you know what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, is that I think sometimes people do get what's coming to them, whatever that is. And it might not be right away or in front of your eyes or instant, but it, it, it might be that they're putting out so much negative energy that, that it will kind of reflect back onto them. I feel bad for the people that those people influence them because a lot of them are the easily influenced type, the type who is in this flatter thing, they're doing their best, they're learning, they're trying to grow and develop, but yet their, their head can be turned to any sort of unsubstantiated rumor, lie, innuendo, and then they take it on board because they're involved in the cult of personality and they like that person who said it and they trust their flat earth work. So they've got to trust that other stuff they say too. It's got to be true. And then they go around and spread whatever it may be. And that's the sad part. I feel bad for those people. I see them as actually being victims. They don't even know it. They're technically flying monkeys, but they're also victims as well. So I would love that a resolution across the plane would be that we just try to be nicer to each other. We can do it. We have to do oh, it. You were talking mm -hmm. about um, wasting time there. I remember wasting time. Well, all us guys on Iron Realm met through Twitter. And I don't know how many hours I've spent talking to other Twitter users on the curvature math and you would just go around and round, round, round circles and wasting time. I, th I, th I thought I was talking to genuine people. I thought, Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll talk. I was just naive. It's just, it's just unbelievable how, how you can talk to people and yet it was just naivety on my, my account. I, I just, I, I'm genuine. I'm straight up. And, and these people just giving me the run around. No. Same with Boston, Boston bombings. I, I, I opened up a Twitter account after the Boston bombings and I didn't know about trolls. I didn't know about any of that sort of stuff. And as soon as I posted one thing and I got absolutely smashed. Oh, it was unbelievable. It was just one after the other. And one troll that was on uh, Boston bombings, he's now in the Flat Earth. He's trolling the, all the Flat Earth people. Uh, he's a Newcastle supporter too, uh, Adam. Well, he, Newcastle he, Football Club. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, can he hold that against him? Waste, <laughs> wasting, wasting time with it. And, it, and because I was so stupid, I was. I, I thought I was, all these people were genuine and they were just on the other side of the argument of, of um, two these types, topics, you know what I mean? Isn't there? There's, you look at that and you, you think, you know, there's obviously the paid shills that are doing that, but what's missing in your life if actually, after just having a laugh at flat earth views, you, you, you don't move on and actually it becomes part of your life to ridicule that. It really is quite... <laughs> sad state of affairs i think really in terms of that those that are involved like that i've got and that's that's the thing mate there's a 
<coughs> that's how we met, wasn't it? Chatting about the shape of the earth. And there is so many people that are fake with that. And, and it, it really does make me wonder when you talk about karma, where, where they are just in their own. Lost. Lost in space. I feel so sorry for those people. Yeah, they're broken. Yeah, so I, I was looking. I was looking into this stuff for three or four years before I got a Twitter account, or maybe even five or six years before I got their Twitter account. I should have been well aware of all this stuff, but I wasn't. I was, you know, I was obviously still in my own world and and trusted people, and and uh, you shouldn't do that. Well, unfortunately, there are trust. people out there who feed off of other people's misery, negativity, off the turmoil they can create. I mean, that's what a lot of, you know, the powers that should not be. That's why they have this structure we're all caught up in. They feed off of it. They feed off what they create well, and they jump reckon, into the chat reckon, and start having it. Pays well? You reckon I'm um, sitting on a keyboard um, annoying people pays well or what? Yeah, it can't pay that well, right? Because Flat Earth doesn't pay well. I think it might height with a couple of commercials on every video because I don't have PayPal or take donations or anything. I think it might height, which might have been 2016 when there weren't as many channels as there are now, I might have made like 200 or something dollars a month. Woo! I mean, of course, I'm grateful for that. But yet what I'm saying is Flat Earth doesn't pay well. I never thought it would. I mean, that's not why I'm doing it. But so does sitting on a keyboard, like you said, typing out crazy, keeping people engaged, arguing about curvature, you know, like you're talking about. Ah, does it pay well? I bet you it does. I bet you seek out $20 those an hour, maybe. That would be the max, right? Well, you figure they're either government employees, meaning they're on the, the public teat and probably getting paid pretty well because of that, or they're probably working for a private contractor who is... Sounds so... James Bondian, though, is, do we really know if this is happening? And well, short of that, I guess you're just a keyboard warrior in a basement. I think that there's a lot more of that than what we think. Probably. Because there's people who just want to fight. They just, they desire to be right. They want to dominate. And if you were to peek inside their life, they are probably losing big time. They're probably, I mean, we all have issues in our life, of course, you know, um, but they're probably just, so broken down by life they can go and be any icon they want that they can put as their face any name they want and appear to be you know a kind of superman or superwoman super into intelligent and you know it's a, it's their it's their alter personality in some way and it's a way to make their own miserable life better i guess or, very, they're getting, or they're getting paid. <laughs> or both. Or they're getting paid. It is very <laughs> DID, disassociative identity disorder, I suppose. Uh -huh. Very kind of uh yeah. I bet you they are struggling for some sense of control. A normal person head. wouldn't do that. Mm -mm. Nope. No, because a normal person just wants to find love. A normal person just wants people to get along. Yeah. A normal person like Karen B tending to her children. I mean everybody is tending to the things that they love in their life. You know, uh, we, we have unfortunate things happen. Somebody might get sick, this and that we have to deal with it. That happens. But the hate that must happen in a person's brain to cause a person to feel that the only way to relieve this feeling is to go to a keyboard and type hate in. That's wow. I feel so bad for them and and they might not even know that that's what they're doing that's the weird part they might think they're right and here's a funny thought if they are government paid trolls you know like we were saying they must know an awful lot about flat earth because they've got to fight against us so they've got to know the heliocentric model and they've got to know some pretty good stuff about flat earth and th that means to be able to retain all that knowledge unless they're just doing cut and paste, they're pretty smart. Imagine if they used that for something worthwhile. Imagine. It, I'm sure it takes a lot of effort, but I suspect they have a, a briefing sheet with generalized talking points. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they do. They do. They have a shared, um, all the trolls have a shared uh, sheet that they use. Troll one sheet? <laughs> they do. Oh my gosh. 
really i'm really looking yes. at this thing called the dashboard for disruption i did a little search while you were talking about it mm -hmm. and there's apparently a thing called the dashboard for disruption that is set up for you to i don't know i'm still digging through i don't want to say the wrong thing here that I, I'm, I'm still finding out but yeah there's a lot in there right thing sheet karen where they have if a flat earther brings up this subject, move on to this or use this. I've seen oh, wow. some of the like a map. Like, yeah, they have like a shared Google Drive doc that everybody yeah. can go access. And, um, it, you know, they have little their arguments and their rebuttals for it. Yeah. Yeah, they, they actually got very organized and banded together and sort of started using these. That's why you'll see the trolls come up and they'll all have the same argument. They do that. That, I mean, they're very organized. That's why um, we started getting organized that way on our own. Like, um, I'm, I'm an admin for this Discord server. It's 24-7 Flat Earth Discord server, with, uh, which now has uh, about 22, 23,000 members in it. But um, when we first started, it was, you know, it was just like one, you know, less than 1,000. And we were debating people. You know, over a year ago, we were doing this stuff. We were dealing with all this stuff. And, you know, a lot of times we, you know, we had a hard time with these arguments. But over time, we started to learn more and we started to, you know, come up with better arguments. And then we figured out that the trolls had their doc sheet. And it's just like, you know, once we started working together, we became much stronger. And now it's like whenever somebody comes into the server and they want to start trying to debate us, it's like... They don't stand a chance. Are there any topics you hear flat earthers arguing and you just want to pull your hair out because they're arguing a point that is not? I have you know? one and it's all women in Hollywood are transgender and all men in Hollywood are transgender. That one right there. I see that come up on Facebook and I almost literally unfriend because if somebody's really going to say that, that's, that's just so. far. And I, I, I can't trust any other things they might be saying about any other subjects if they've bitten that bait and gone with it. So that's, that's the one that, that I, I just like. What about you, Karen? What's one that you hear people talk about? Flat, more, more flat earthy. That is kind of a flat earthy one because it's a lot of flat earthers who are talking about it. So um, uh, here's another one. And this is not to offend anyone. But you can't be a real flat earther unless you believe in Jesus. That one too bothers me. You can be whatever you want to be and talk about I was, the I was what the frick is a real flat earther. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's anyone, all of us, you know? I mean, it's just. Yeah. And who's the making these thing. decisions? Who's the one saying, you're in, you're not in based on this? You know, that's, that's not what this is about. This is about any age, any country any religion or no religion. I mean, it's about, we're all, th the fact that we don't have a leader, we can't be taken out. The fact that we aren't coming it from a cult mentality with one belief system, we can't be stopped. That's our strength. Yeah, I was, the, I was the biggest atheist ever until I saw all this. I don't, I don't believe that there was a, I, I, I believe there was a bloke called Jesus. I don't believe he walked on water, but I, you know, I believe in a creator now. Me too. I, I would never, I would never uh, go and spruik it to anybody. I'm never, I'm not going to go to church. I'm not going to do it. But I can believe what I want. I can do what I want. Yeah. Um. But, I have friends but, who do go to church and do believe. Mm -hmm. all, but they're also, they also are friends with people who are still atheists who are flat earthers because there are some. I'm more like that neutral, and I think everybody has the inalienable right that they were born with to have their own convictions, and I respect that. I think flat Earth. Bit like I mean, I came to a creator concept for a little bit, like Rob, from a, an atheistic point of view. Uh, but flat Earth, like evolution and genetics, is things that disprove random kind of concepts. And <coughs> for me, those things are one self-evident. Um, but the discussion of Jesus or any particular type of doctrine, a wholly separate matter. And whilst one proves... For you. 
for for but you. For, yeah, yeah, uh, for everybody, and and a very individualistic matter with regards to what path you want to tread on the flat Earth, and we all can all tread many different ones. It's whatever the path it is, it's flat. Yeah, and if a person is angry at me, I've had people, I've gone on a show like somebody wanted to interview me, and I've seen in the comment section. I, I, this is what it was. It was Russian Vids, who's a Christian. Russian Vids and I were going to do a show and Russian Vids did a promo for the show he was going to do. And in the promo comments, I think it was something like people were saying to him, you need to tell her to come to Christ or you shouldn't do a show with her. So they were bullying Russian Vids to try to convert me, um, which is, of course he didn't. He's my friend and that that's it, you know? We don't agree on everything, but he's... That's what I'm saying. We don't agree on everything, but we're still friends and respect each other. So uh, why would somebody try to force somebody else to do something like that? Uh, isn't that what we're trying to get away from here? You would think. One would certainly think so. Yeah. So that's going to bring us to right about the halfway mark. Is that right already? Yeah, I guess that is. By the time we've spent 20 minutes rounding up. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Shall I bow out and make room for the fresh meat? <laughs> you need not. No, um, no, no. We just add room. meat to the pile. That's what we okay. do here on the rail. All right. All right. <laughs> I didn't know. I've never used Zoom, which is the platform you use to do this. And I didn't know how many people it can contain. Oh, that's true. See, I forget that limitation. We've been so spoiled with our new toy that we forget the old days of when you have an eight or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah we, I use Google Hangouts. I've, exactly how here. I've done it since I started. And Brilliant. thank you for reminding that. Yeah, yeah. just bring yeah. them on, Josh. Does anybody <laughs> remember when Google Hangouts used to be a thing in 2015 when we first started using? Oh yeah, that's where we all started. It, that's there was a thing called Q and A that you could utilize instead of oh, chat. Yeah. And um, also, whenever you started a hangout, it made a noise like a cowbell it went ding <laughs> <laughs> some of my earlier videos have that ding and then i like look frozen and say hello <laughs> that's Just awesome funny how it's changed and morphed and you know it's everything's getting better but this new zoom oh it's not new zoom new to me zoom technology is really nice it is really nice and just the fact that we could as a group annotate a photo or a video even together and collaborate and make text and arrows and marks and just notes on photos or documents or videos as it plays is really valuable. I think something that people are really going to catch on to. Can no one um, do the porn bombing thing or, or snipe you? Is this, is nope. it? No, no. They have to have the link to the call and then you have to be allowed into the call. Wow. I love this. Yeah. It works just a lot. It works a lot like Google Hangouts, mm -hmm. but and it and it feeds. I know this is boring technical talk for anybody watching. Sorry, it, well, it, we love it. it feeds directly to YouTube. Uh, there's a way. There's an up an upsell. You can upgrade okay. your way to do it. And that's so what I, you guys have done. No, no, I use OBS. Oh, you use OBS. I downloaded OBS, but I'm so not. I'm not a technical person, and I downloaded it and just. I know a guy that can show you a thing or two. Adam is the man. <laughs> it's really simple. That's, that's the important thing, Josh, isn't it? The uh, forget or whatever system. You can't palm bomb this, but OBS, if you're just using Hangouts, is is the system you should run through so that you can then control your broadcast of which the Hangout is one of, and that stops anyone uh, doing anything through the Hangout. It doesn't matter what they do. You can shut the Hangout down in terms of your broadcast. We're being um, flower bombed by Zachary bombed. Zabalas, beautiful <laughs> yellow flower with a tiny little insect on it. Yeah, and I look wanted to show you how we could draw on them, but oh, mine so won't beautiful. work for some reason. That's oh, a squash flower, isn't it? Oh, it yes, is. It is. I thought it was a regular crazy. flower, but I can You're see. country, aren't you, Karen? <laughs> well, like when he was talking earlier about people who need to be talking about like self-sustainability, that's a that's something that I'm totally into, like gardening and then food preservation and all that stuff. I'm into it. So yes, I've I've had many gardens. I know a zucchini flower when I see one. You know, now that I'm looking at it, I kind of knew that too, but it's in my mind from childhood. You know, my parents had a garden and I 
I, I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of far removed from that. I have rosemary and basil. That's all I've got. And a bunch of plants, but I don't have any other food things here. I should. Hey I guys, like I've got, got a duck off, eh? I've got to go and buy a car today or something. So uh, <laughs> good, to, uh, good, to have, good, to, good to have you in, uh, Patricia. Thank glad you so you, much. Uh, glad you uh, answered my Twitter. Thank you. I'm glad to. Okay. okay. See you all later. All right, Rob. Love you. Bye. Bye. Are, you are you going? Bye. Sorry, Bye. I, was yeah, I, I was busy. I was busy. I've got to go. Thank it's, you, Rob. Love you, brother. Saturday, Saturday morning here. I've got things to do. See you later. All right. <laughs> so uh, you're in the future. We forget that. Tell me what it's like tomorrow. Mm. I'm curious too. I don't really reckon we ought to round out seeing how we do still have people waiting on us. I know Didi's probably anxious to get to bed too. I know she was tired when she started and we've done nothing but ramble. Well, I've well, got a holiday coming up so I can sleep all week next week. Hi, Didi. Well, you have a cool. Job. You get to hang out with us <laughs> longer, man. That'd be awesome. We usually are keeping you up way too late, I know. Oh, that looks good. Zachary looks nice. That's like the perfect size of a garden for me, but yours is probably bigger than that. You're just not showing the whole thing, right? Yeah. It's 20 by 13. Yeah. I like how you have, is that mulch making those pathways? Yes. That is for the four-year-old that I'm teaching how to do all this stuff. So she knows where she can walk. Oh, wow. How wonderful is that? Oh, that's brilliant. Teach your children well, and you are doing that. I don't know if you know Patricia, but that he won't big it up, but go to his mm -hmm. not his god. Staying with him. Watch his channel. It's it's been amazing watching him build this garden up from scratch, take the contents of the old ramshackle garden and turn it into nutrients for the soil and just the whole process of what he's done has been a real pleasure to watch, mate. And I'd recommend anybody to go there. It's it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, not only just to watch, but oh, educationally, it's 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 brilliant. Well done, mate. It's uh, it looks gorgeous, and the, the finish for the for the kids is 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 awesome, as well as it looking really cool. <laughs> yeah, I like the way it makes it pop. Mm. Hey Zach, what's the name of your channel? It would be good times for all. It's not spelled at all <laughs> like you would think. E U D T I M S, the number four, A L L. It's spelled the way it should be spelled. Yeah, that's how, yeah. <laughs> that's how I thought. Especially good. Good. I mean, why do you need two, two O's? Oh, good. Good, good, good <laughs> Tim's. No, that'd be good. Good. Real good. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. Aaron, are you going to be able to hang out with us through the break and come back around again? Uh oh, did we lose her already? Oh, no, well. I think she's there. I think she muted her mic for a moment. Maybe she didn't realize you were speaking to her. Karen, are you going to be able to hang out with us? Oh, yeah. I wasn't sure if you were who you were talking to, but yeah, yeah, I can be here for a little awesome. bit. Awesome. Sweet. So, uh, hey, Ed, you, you got that gravity pulled up? Ed Rock, where are you? Oh, hell, did we lose him? <laughs> He's probably out getting wine. Juice. I thought I, I saw Jason pop in for a minute, didn't he? I was there here. I was Learning. typing the word vagabond. <laughs> I am here. I just had Hi. my mic muted for a moment. That oh. voice that we all know so well. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Well, awesome. Quit showing off your sexy voice, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> there he he does have wow. a sexy voice. I love Jason's voice. Between Jason's <laughs> voice and Karen's voice, I mean, come on. <laughs> Pretty ideal, everyone. <laughs> they were going to need to la launch like a Vox porn channel or something. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Crow, this is cool. And I was going to leave. I'm not leaving now. You can't. You'll have to eject me. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't dream of it. We were just going to take a little break because ideally, rather than having like a three hour show that nobody wants to click on and have to sit through, we try to break it up a little bit. So ideally what we do is we'll play out a little music, take a few minutes to let YouTube reset the stream. And then as soon as we're able, we'll just pop back live again for 
second segment, which ideally we all all about shoot the moon more in the new year. And I don't know, John would really have my ass if I didn't mention spagyrics. So hopefully we'll get into that a little bit as well. All right. So down and dirty, what are we doing here? Down and dirty. Let's do shoot the moon new year and we'll see what we have left over. All right. You're leading me astray. I heard you say break, but now I'm hearing you say we're doing this. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. We're taking a break now. And then when we come back, what we're going to do is shoot the moon new years. And then if you have time left over, we'll try to get into some spagyric. All right. What time do you want me back right now? Well, listen to the music. Yeah. The break will only be about five minutes at best. All right. I'll mute. I'll mute out for a couple minutes. All right. All right. Awesome. Well, Adam, if you want to kick it off, we will be right back after a little bit of gravity from Cheyenne. Will there be dancing? <laughs> oh, you can, you can be. Oh, sure. you can dance. Yes, yeah. ma'am. Right. You can dance. You can leave your mic on and sing whatever you wish. You can dance if you want to. You can leave your friends. <laughs> oh, you can do it. Do it. <laughs> Right, let's get us out of here. I'm gonna press play. Bit of gravity, everyone. And you can be sure it's playing on YouTube. We just don't get to hear it. So apparently, there's no dancing. Oh They've got a hold of me. They won't let go of me. Let go of me. They fight of gravity on the side. But something's pulling us high. Bye. 